Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Great Hall at the Cooper Union. Great because this is the space that brings all of New York together. Great because this is where the significant debates of our time have always been launched. And great because it gives us an opportunity to welcome extraordinary voices into this space. Tonight's guest speakers, Anne Lacaton and Jean-Philippe Vassal, recent Pritzker Award winners, are no strangers to the stature of this room. Before I begin though, I'd like to set a tradition within this space that is long overdue. We'd like to begin by acknowledging that the land on which the Cooper Union sits is the territory of the unceded sacred homeland of the Lenape people who've stewarded this land throughout generations. We acknowledge that the displacement of indigenous peoples and the devastating effect that forced relocation has had on these communities has largely been overlooked and understudied. Well, if this space cannot help address these and other difficult topics, then what space can? This event would not have been possible without the, a complex array of people and collaborations that came together in partnership. Beyond the Irwin S. Channon School of Architecture, for which I've had the honor of serving as Dean during the past six years, I want to thank the Architectural League, whose long-standing partnership has brought many critical speakers to this space. In collaboration with Paul Lewis and Rieselbach and Rosalie Ginevro, I've had the great pleasure of planning many such events. And tonight's event will be capped off by a closing statement by Rosalie herself. This event is also co-sponsored by the AIA New York, Ben Prosky and his many collaborators in the AIA Housing Committee have worked hard to set the wheels in motion for this occasion. This program is also supported in part by public funds from the New York City Department of Cultural Affairs in partnership with the City Council and the New York State Council of the Arts, uh, the support of the Office of the Governor and the New York State Legislature. With this welcoming, I hope to be able to do this on a more regular basis, as was possible in the past. The separation of the last year and a half is a reminder of the simple pleasures of presence, of tactility, and of being there. I would like to think that the ritual of coming together in this space should be something we fight for, something we cherish, and a central part of our pedagogical commitments. Nothing can give me more pleasure than to host our guest speakers tonight. And to help me do that, I'd like to welcome Brian Laughlin, who will make the formal introduction and in turn act as a moderator for the evening. Brian is the Director of Planning and Urban Design at Magnuson Architecture and Planning, co-chair of the AIA New York Housing Committee, APA Housing and Community Development Chair, and adjunct assistant professor of architecture and real estate development at Columbia's GSAP. And before joining MAP, he worked for over 15 years uh, in public housing. So welcome to the evening and Brian, it's yours. Thank you, Nadir, and good evening. Good evening. Okay. Tremendous thank you to Cooper Union for their generosity and hospitality in hosting this event. On behalf of myself and my co-chair, Peter Bafidas, and the entire AIA New York Housing Committee, uh, we'd like to welcome all of you, uh, and thank you for joining us here tonight for the annual Rotensky Lecture. Uh, we're so fortunate to be here in Cooper Union's Great Hall. Um, many of you know this already, but I like to think of this as the Wembley Stadium or the Madison Square Garden of architectural lectures and debate. It truly is an honor and a fitting one to be bringing you this year's Rotensky Lecture from this space. I would also like to thank the Architectural League um, and the Center for Architecture for joining the Cooper Union and co-hosting this event. It's certainly fitting, uh, albeit humbling, um, that we have these three institutions, uh, true pillars of the architectural community here in New York City, um, hosting this year's uh, Rotensky Lecture 
um, and, and we're able to bring this year's recipients here to, to speak with you tonight. Um, we are also joined tonight by members of the Ratensky family, uh, including Sam's son, Alex. Uh, and in addition, we'd like to thank, you know, it's my job to, to, to thank uh, our long list of sponsors, which include the French Embassy as part of their new initiative, uh, Villa Albertine. Um, I'd also like to thank Equitone Panels. Um, we are also sponsored by the firms Magnuson Architecture and Planning and RKTB. Uh, and we have additional support from the mega contracting group. So thank you to all of them. Um, and without your generosity, we would not be here tonight. So I wanna share with you a little bit about the Ratensky Lecture. The annual Ratensky Lecture was initiated by Housing Committee members, Carmi B and Ted Lieberman, who are both here with us tonight. Um, in honor of Samuel Ratensky, who is an architect, city planner, public official, and staunch advocate of good public housing. And he was responsible for many major housing initiatives in the city of New York from 1946 to 1972. His career included stints at the Housing Study Guild, the Housing Resettlement Administration, the New York City Housing Authority, uh, the storied Urban Development Corporation, and many, many others, where not only did he serve as a civil servant, but he also served as a mentor to many of the architects who worked in his programs, and many of whom are still practicing today in, in the field of housing. In 1966, local chapters of the American Society of Landscape Architects and the American Society of Civil Engineers presented Sam with their Medal of Honor, and their citation described Sam as a rare combination of judgment, insight, idealism, both in conception and execution of the city's housing and planning policies. For over 20 years, this lecture series has honored architects, city planners, policymakers, civil servants, housing advocates, and even a developer or two, all of whom, like Sam, have dedicated their careers to making our cities more diverse, more inclusive, more welcoming, and more generous places to live. This year's lecture, however, marks a number of firsts for the Ratensky Lecture. It is the first year we have awarded the Ratensky Lecture to someone outside of the United States. It's the first year we have awarded the Ratensky Lecture not just to one, but to three individuals. Um, and it's the first time we have awarded the Ratensky Lecture to, uh, to Pritzker Prize laureates. We'd like to think in years to come that maybe the Pritzker is a stepping stone to the Ratensky Lecture. <laughs> All of these firsts point to the, imp the importance of the issues that the Ratensky Lecture seeks to, to illuminate, to raise above. Considerable, they, they, they promote, the Ratensky Lecture is meant to promote a life of service, a career of considerable contributions to good urban design, inclusive community planning, and above all, the importance of housing. So I first encountered the work of our guests this evening over 10 years ago while I was working as the chief architect for a small public housing authority here in the United States. Like many, public, like many people who worked in public housing at the time, I was constantly reminded of an image that many of you probably uh, have seen. And it's an image of the, the buildings of pruitt Igo uh, being violently demolished in 1973. For those of you who are not familiar, pruitt Igo was an innovative collection of residential towers designed by the Yamasaki um, and was built in the American city of St. Louis during the 1950s at the height of modernism. And it was meant to stand as a triumph of rational architectural design over the ills of poverty and urban blight. Instead, however, this complex of nearly 3,000 homes was marred by two decades of political ignorance, resident distrust, bureaucratic mismanagement, disinvestment, and disrepair. The spectacular implosion of these towers in 1973 came to symbolize the failure of public housing, the failure of the social policies of Johnson's Great Society, and even the failure of modernism. This tyranny, or the, sorry, the tyranny of this image still haunts us. But then when I was working 
as a chief architect in a small public housing authority. A new, public, a new image of public housing emerged from France of all places. It consisted of a dilapidated tower from the 60s, much like ours. It suffered a poor renovation in the 80s, much like ours. But in this new image, the building was not being demolished. It would remain. Its residents were not being displaced. They were allowed to stay home and watch the renovations. Their living spaces were not reduced. They were not right-sized. In fact, they were doubled. The generosity of this new image of housing, public social housing is profound. It is for this image and all of the brilliant work before it and all of the impact after it that I am honored to present to you this year's recipients of the Rotensky Lecture, Anne Lacaton, Jean-Philippe Passal, and Frederic Drouot. First, I, I would like to, to thank you very much for your invitation here in New York. It's always uh, fantastic to, to be here, to arrive in Manhattan. It's always uh, a great pleasure. Last time it was four years ago and it's far away now. When we look south, we we see the sky blue. When, when we look north, we see also the sky. When we look to the west, we see the horizon and the sky. When we look to the east, we see the sky. It's marvelous to walk in the city. It's marvelous to, to inhabit here, even for a couple of days. Thanks to the <clears throat> urban orthogonal grid of the city of Manhattan, which constructs the space, which constructs the void. This void is fantastic. It's important, the importance of space. It's the space where we inhabit, and this void that exists in Manhattan, he has to, uh, to exist in all dimensions, in the dimension of the city, in the dimension of each house. The city is a big house, and each house is a little city. I would like to, with Frédéric and Anne, to develop uh, two main topics today. It's about housing. It's about transformation. Transformation, we, we share this question with uh, Frédéric, uh, a very good friend since uh, many years now with uh, a very important intensity. So housing, transformation, but also all these two questions. They can be continued, they can be followed, they can be also part of the urban question. Case by case, precisely, step by step, not from a sort of above, from above vision, but mainly from a very, very precise, uh, careful attention to each situation. So we, we want to talk about these, these questions. Housing, inhabiting. Housing, it's not necessary only to between some walls and windows. Housing, it's perhaps more general. It is also to, 
to continue outside the city, inside the city, to, to be in the space, in the streets, from your house to the streets to the city. We really believe that housing is the most beautiful challenge for contemporary architecture, the most exciting today, the most democratic today. Housing is a unit of urban measurement, not housing in general, but one flat or one house or one villa, which means a continuous attention to its inhabitant, multiplied 10 times, 100 times, 1,000 times, 1 million times, carefully. Inhabiting beyond the functional, it's about freedom, comfort, generosity of space, pleasure and luxury for all, and affordability. Two images of the house Latapi was taken uh, 30 years later after it was completed. One other image of the city manifest in Mulhouse to see the, what can be the pleasure of living. The space for living must be generous, comfortable, adaptable, flexible, luxurious, affordable. Maison La Tapie again. Some housing in Saint-Nazaire. Dwellings must offer freedoms of usage to generate possibilities for evolution, for interpretation and for appropriation. Housing must offer as much extra space as programmed space to promote relationships within spaces, to bring about pleasurable situations. Extra space is a space non-programmed, free for use, undefined. It means build larger, twice more, building double, with the same cost as a standard dwelling, to be affordable for everyone. A dwelling like a villa. A dwelling should be more than the minimum function. It means also extra space, additional facilities space for freedom, space for usage that nobody knows. Instead of the standard, where everything is constrained between doors and windows, we think that it is important to develop additional private spaces like winter gardens, terraces, balconies, unprogrammed spaces, like perhaps 50% minimum of the habitable surface, in addition to the normal flat. It's about fluidity, mobility, freedom, and appropriation. Instead to be constrained without any mobility inside the flat, it's important to extend the mobility, the freedom of use to allow appropriation. All rooms have large doors opening to outside. Facility of moving by inside or by outside of the house on the same level. It means like a house in the garden that could be repeated 10 times, 20 times on different levels on a collective building. The same facility as a villa. So it means simple systems of construction instead of walls and small windows inside the walls to think about a beam column constructive system that will allow flexibility and economy. So these bearing walls that constrain the space, that avoid the space to go far away to the landscape, to the views. We can just think with open structure, large span, free facade, only few columns that allow flexibility, adaptability, capacity of evolution. Economical construction, it means that we can build larger, 
but at the same cost by using less materials to produce more space. It's also about climate, energy saving and uses. To stop fighting against the climate, but just trying to play with it at the different moments of the seasons, of the day and the night, when the sun is there or when it is raining. Instead of a sort of envelope of insulation all around the house, it is better to develop the idea of a sort of temperate intermediate space, a kind of buffer zone that will work with passive energy systems. And in the same time that will provide a better insulation than the standard insulation, it will create a space where people can find some pleasure to occupy the space in function of the seasons, in function of their character, in function of the mode, in function of if it is day or night, sunny or rainy. Space that can move like a clothes that you have on your shoulders. It's not the same in the same, the, the worst cold days of winter than in the hot days of summer. So like a clothes that you have on your shoulders, this envelope needs to move. One of the last projects we have done in Rixheim in the east of France, northeast of France, 18 dwellings for senior population working on the same principle with collective spaces. A space that is connected with the climate, that plays with the climate, that offers possibilities of choice to its residents. or a higher building in Genève, where we have with the same principle developed 100 dwellings on top of five levels of offices that also try to develop this possibility to let the space escape, escape to the, to the views and to the landscape. To see the sun, to see the sky, to see the clouds, and to create this intermediate situation. This is a space that we dream to bring in any situation. It can be by a new project or it could be by transformation. And I leave and continue. Transformation is um, also a very important topic for us. In we think that it's today very crucial to think to transformation. Transformation is about make do with the existing, with people, with nature, with climate, with economy, with intelligence, with minimum material to reuse, to transform, to invent or reinvent with, with what we already have in hands, to do more with less. Make do is about using what we already have and make the better use of it. Make do is about considering the existing as a resource and the preliminary value instead of seeing it as only a problem. Make do means taking with you the values of the existing, its, its strengths, and not making against or denying them in order to make them the driving force of a new project. It means extending existing situations with accuracy and precision. Make do is also an economy of gesture, of material, of CO2, of energy, an economy in short, which is favorable to the essential. Today, the existing situations are the new material for the projects. So this is a very exciting and creative situation that calls for inventive approach in any situation. Make do with the nature means take care to, to trees, to soils, to flowers, to animals, with everything or, already there. Make do with the existing as an opportunity to make a more sustainable master planning, which is another way of making the city. 
make do with abandoned buildings, and there are a lot to reuse, to re-give re life, to invent uses, and also make do with housing blocks to transform them, to reuse, to upgrade, to extend life, to give more with less. All the qualities of housing, which have been described before, must be also applied in the transformation of the existing housing with a goal to upgrade the existing to a better quality comparable to the new housing and to give a new life for all this housing. This is absolutely essential to achieve a general upgrade of the quality of housing beneficial for everyone. And also the transformation of housing is an opportunity to make very good housing in a, in a, uh, le with less cost and to give the, the opportunity to everyone to live uh, in very good housing. However, though this was uh, in France, one of the first uh, housing estates built in the suburb of Paris, La Courneuve, 4,000 uh, dwellings. But however, today, uh, these large uh, modern housing developments are most often rejected, neglected or unloved and often considered as problems more than opportunities. And after the utopia of the new way of life in the 60s, at the time of the construction, um, came the disenchantment until the critical situation that we know today here and there. So as a consequence, many of these blocks are demolished or the intention to demolish uh, is uh, there. So this is a case in France where in the last 15 years, uh, through a national program of uh, urban renovation, almost 200,000 dwellings have been uh, uh, demolished and replaced by only 150,000 uh, new dwellings. So together with uh, Frédéric and Jean-Philippe, we studied very carefully the situation uh, of uh, uh, demolition as, uh, an, uh, as a tool of renovation when it was, uh, uh, when the, the, this program was launched in France, it means uh, around 2000. So it's already 20 years that we work on that uh, situation. And for us, it was uh, really shocking to see all these buildings um, demolished, which are not at the end of the life. And uh, we decided to study very carefully this. So when we knew uh, very fast uh, regarding this, this situation that um, the demolition and reconstruction of standard housing, uh, the, what is spent to do it is, to do it is 165,000 euros per dwelling, while in the situation that we uh, studied of transformation instead of demolition, uh, we arrive in uh, almost all cases to 55,000 euros per dwelling, which means one third so which means that uh, for one, build, one apartment demolished, we can renovate in an extremely good way uh, three uh, apartments. So facing this uh, very strong situation, and uh, it's clear that our voice was not so important, uh, facing this uh, huge uh, national program, which involved uh, many ministries, a lot, of, uh, a lot of money. So for us, it was uh, clear, uh, we, Finally, we defined a very clear position, which was never demolish, never subtract, remove or replace, always add, transform and utilize with and for uh, the inhabitants. And we worked on um, a research a study uh, where we studied um, a number of cases which were coming from the national program. We studied them in, in detail. Uh, technical details, social detail, uh, uh, options of transformation, cost, uh, just to really have a, a clear view of the situation, because uh, in the situation, um, most of the time, the uh, arguments are very easy and never requestioned. It's always said that uh, these buildings are out of use, that cannot be renovated because the problems are too big, uh, that uh, acoustic uh, problems cannot be solved, or uh, uh, insulation uh, never. 
that uh, it's uh, even more expensive to uh, to uh, transform than to demolish and to rebuild. And we wanted to go through all these questions in in really in detail uh, to uh, really deconstruct uh, these uh, these uh, um, pre-made ideas, which are never re-questioned. And for all of them and all the, the cases we studied, we always found the solution uh, and for uh, the, the cost that I uh, mentioned before. So um, we studied the number of... Uh, well, sorry. No, next. What should I download? <laughs> Ah, thank you. And in fact, in, uh, we studied and uh, looking always uh, to look first at the positive, because it's very easy to go to those places and to see very fast that everything is negative, everything is bad, and to decide something. Uh, and for us, it was important to start with the positive values, and we see that the positive values are much bigger than the negative one. So uh, we started there with this uh, uh, principle of finding the values uh, and the potential of transformation that can be revealed and developed. And in most of these basic cases, uh, all these buildings were made very fast in the, in the 60s to fulfill the need of, uh, of uh, housing. And uh, most of the time, the importance was uh, more given to the master plan than to the quality of the housing itself. And uh, finally, it was considered as blocks in, uh, in, uh, uh, in um, master planning, in, while finally inside, it's many, many individual situations of living. So if considering this situation, we thought that finally we could continue what was not done at the, at the moment. It means giving more light, giving more view, giving an exterior space and to change radically the situation. So based on these principles, we had the opportunity to, uh, to, um, to work on three projects and to complete three projects. The first one, uh, 10 years ago, was in, uh, in Paris to Bois le Prêtre. Uh, it was a part of a series of uh, buildings made in the uh, 60s, 70s by the architect uh, um, Raymond Lopez. And at the time, it was uh, a good housing, good architecture, uh, but uh, transformed in uh, the early 80s, uh, but just uh, transformed uh, for the necessity of uh, isolation uh, with no care of the, the quality of the house itself. And the situation of uh, uh, trying to, to bring solutions only to a very small, not small, but only a technical problem, finally uh, lead uh, to, uh, uh, to low grade. Uh, so when they, they had loggias with large openings, finally uh, uh, they, they, they got uh, narrow uh, plastic windows, uh, while the view around is uh, absolutely uh, fantastic, but they, they lost the part of this view, the, the, the view, they lost uh, natural light. And uh, when we were invited to uh, work on this competition, because the first the city of Paris uh, uh, studied the, the possible demolition, but finally they decided to keep the building and to make a transformation. So we won the competition on the principle that uh, we, uh, we would uh, transform the, the housing from the inside to improve the quality of the building. Uh, we didn't really care if it's a block, a tower, or a long uh, uh, housing. What is important is the quality of housing itself, so it means how the space inside uh, is. Uh, so, and we propose to, to make this transformation from inside. Uh, and also to make it within the inhabitants. So it means that uh, without uh, removing any family from the building, if the family wanted to stay. So we won on this principle and uh, we uh, continued the studies. And the, one of, of our first work was to visit 
uh, the apartments and uh, because it's the, the best way to, uh, to, con to, to enter in contact with people because most of them, they are a bit suspicious about what will uh, happen. Uh, and uh, just to, uh, to the fact to check the, how it is, what they need, uh, what is uh, the, the technical uh, situation uh, was uh, the way to uh, approach people. And then we did also a long process of uh, uh, discussion who uh, introduced uh, the inhabitants as a part of the process. Uh, so we did a number of meetings on general topics, but also we met every family uh, separately. So, and uh, this, uh, this work was very uh, successful because we could observe while visiting uh, the housing that half of the families didn't uh, live in the ty typology which was uh, fitting with their need. Uh, so after all this process, we arrived to, uh, to, to remove people inside the block so that everyone could get uh, the right uh, apartments that they needed according to their family situation. So this was a long process, but also very interesting because uh, everyone was uh, involved in, uh, in this process. And finally, the project, uh, uh, start start from this existing. Uh, we added all around uh, a new uh, uh, a new layer of uh, two meters point uh, fifty two meters point five sorry. Uh, and uh, in blue it's uh, winter gardens and uh, in uh, in uh, yellow it was uh, uh, additional rooms to extend the number of typology, which was uh, quite narrow between small or, or much, uh, much bigger. And also we propose uh, many other works like uh, new elevators, uh, which uh, uh, also improve the quality of building. So the, the methodology of works was also very important because uh, if uh, making a project uh, in condition of occupied site needs, requires to think uh, uh, much ahead uh, all the, 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 the methods. So we propose that to do uh, not so many uh, works inside and uh, no, uh, no break of walls, no change in the floors, uh, but just uh, an addition. And uh, we see that uh, the additions, which at the same time brings more space, helps also to solve a lot of technical problems of fire security, of energy, uh, and, uh, and so on. So, and then we started the process of uh, construction, first removing the, the, uh, the panels with uh, asbestos uh, and these modules, which were uh, built outside and uh, brought on the side. Uh, and uh, the situation uh, uh, of a radical change uh, through this uh, extension. There was also a discussion between the owner and the association of tenants uh, to decide also what will be the rent afterwards. And finally, there was, uh, it was very different because families were there since many years and some uh, more recently. So, but at the end, it was uh, for some uh, uh, tenants, no uh, increase. And for some others, a very light increase that was uh, uh, spread on, on, on uh, many, uh, on, on some years. So from the existing situation, uh, this uh, new one with uh, these uh, large glass windows, winter gardens, which where the occupation, it's, it's really a free space, an extra space where the occupation is led uh, to the desire of uh, inhabitants. And also work on the ground floors to uh, remove the grids, which has been uh, 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 made in uh, the 80s, uh, reopen the ground floor and make it more uh, welcoming. And finally, this work of uh, improving the quality of housing um, at the end makes a radical change of the building itself uh, and uh, it changes also its uh, architecture. Another project in a quite different situation. Uh, uh, it's a small city in the east of France, close to Atlantic Ocean. Uh, here we have to work on uh, this neighborhood, but just for uh, one of this block of 40 housing, which was half empty. Uh, to renovate, uh, and the renovation is much more to uh, improve the quality uh, of, um, of the comfort, uh, energy consumption, and so on. So um, we propose here again to start from uh, 
the uh, approach of inside to see how uh, is the space inside. Here again, it was very difficult in terms of uh, structure to, to envisage any change in the internal structure because it would have been big works and very expensive. The construction was made with concrete tunnels. And we pro finally, the, um, the, what was not working well in all the apartments was the bathroom, very small, less than three square meters. So we proposed in the process to, uh, to move the, the small bathroom into the smallest uh, bedroom to create a new bedroom outside and to uh, join uh, the new bedroom to the, the existing uh, apartment by a winter garden and the balcony. And at the end, it makes uh, this new apartment, which uh, gained uh, 33 uh, square meters. But also um, here, because it was uh, a master plan with a very low footprint of the buildings on the ground, less uh, than 10%, uh, we saw an opportunity also to, uh, to go farther than uh, the, the transformation, uh, and especially what uh, uh, could we do, we do uh, with um, the car parking, the, the uh, car parking lots, which were most of them unused around the buildings. And we proposed the uh, densification by creating additional uh, buildings that you can see in, uh, in uh, violet here, connected to the existing, which allowed to create the two uh, new uh, lifts and, uh, and the access and uh, uh, to make more comfortable the existing one, and also to uh, this opportunity to, to use in the best way uh, a ground which is already belonged by the owner, so the, no uh, extra cost uh, to buy uh, land, uh, and to uh, also uh, densify the situation, uh, which was really uh, possible there without losing any green space and without uh, damaging the quality of the existing housing. And then the process of construction with uh, dry construction uh, started. Um, and finally, there's a new uh, uh, building which is totally transformed and expanded by 40 uh, apartments transformed and 40 new dwellings uh, on uh, this uh, plot. It's also public social housing. So from the existing, that's uh, uh, the existing, the uh, opening of uh, uh, the wall, uh, creating of the glass windows and winter gardens, and all the systems of uh, curtains that allows to, uh, uh, to manage very well the comfort at different seasons by opening uh, uh, glass windows, closing the curtains, and so on. And the new housing, which also follows the same uh, um, the values of the quality of the housing. And the last example is more recent that we built in uh, Bordeaux. We completed it a few years ago. And, and here it's a three uh, big housing blocks of 530 dwellings, which were part also of a big neighborhood built uh, in the 60s, 70s, very close to the city center. But today the situation is, is quite good because uh, uh, the proximity of the city center uh, makes, um, makes it very well uh, deserved by uh, transport, by equipment and so on. Uh, and uh, the, the, the three blocks we had to work with are these uh, three ones. So in the city, it's quite prominent because the Bordeaux is very small, uh, a very low stone city and these blocks. Uh, so at the time, it's clear uh, they, 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 are tot they were totally full up, uh, but it was not, uh, the, it, they were not the most desired uh, places to live in, uh, in uh, the city, but it was uh, quite low rents and a good place to be. So again, a very different situation, but the same attitude, not staying outside to look at these blocks and uh, probably find them a bit ugly, but very fast to go inside. And inside, again, it's uh, 530 uh, individual situation, all of them uh, with people which has given a lot of care, a lot of uh, richness, and the richness is inside, the beauty is inside. And also, uh, always very touching to see that these, all these apartments are like little museums, uh, 
uh, we uh, were very surprised to see how people are uh, able to make collections, collection of everything, and all this mix in, uh, inside. And uh, that was a very uh, interesting situation. And when uh, you finish the visit, you you know that you have to take care about this because the people are really attached to their uh, to their uh, interior space, and that we have to to do the works very carefully. So here again, we propose to improve the quality of uh, uh, the housing, the space of housing, but also all the upgrade in uh, technical upgrades. Uh, and uh, we propose to make it as, as well here in uh, uh, occupied side. It means that 530, uh, 420 something uh, families stayed in their apartment without a move uh, during uh, the, the construction works. So the principle here again is uh, to make an extension in front. Here it's four meters on one side because the blocks are quite long and most of the apartments have uh, two orientations. Uh, it was also the opportunity to open uh, all the, to transform all windows in uh, indoors, uh, to open the, here the, um, the light uh, wall uh, on the living room to make this, uh, to create this mobility that we could see on the sketch before, uh, which for us it's a very uh, important quality, like in a house, to have the possibility to turn around and to have different uh, ways of moving in the uh, in, in in the house. So this system applied to a little part of the block because uh, the blocks are organized is five uh, stairs with uh, three apartments per level. Uh, around the stairs and the extension of one side, uh, which for most of the apartment represents uh, a doubling of the, uh, the, former, the former space. So when this was applied to all levels for all uh, apartments, uh, the methodology of extension works is again very important and must be defined uh, very, very early in the process because it's also uh, part of the, su the success of, the, uh, of the, 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 um, the project. So here you can see the different uh, phases and uh, then the process of, uh, uh, of the works which uh, started with uh, uh, two separated uh, works, one which was the extension and the other one which was the interior works of uh, renovation. So the process of uh, extension that finally, uh, uh, this is the final result of a building absolutely uh, transformed, uh, much closer, the process of uh, bringing these new modules of uh, nearly seven by four meters built at uh, two kilometers away and uh, just uh, from the track to the, to the site, uh, then the preparation to the, the other levels, the two columns, the slabs and uh, when a number of uh, levels are made, uh, the process of opening the windows can start. Up to now, it uh, doesn't create any disturbance because uh, the works are outside, but at the moment we start the, the openings, it uh, creates uh, here the disturbance, but the commitment was that the um, replacement of the, of the facade was maximum two days. So the second day is a glass window and then the winter garden is nearly ready and some uh, very few weeks later the inhabitants can have the use. No comment on this sketch but just to say that the winter gardens are also a very efficient tools uh, to uh, save energy because it's, uh, it makes a buffer zone uh, which uh, makes a difference of temperature between outside and inside so in winter it's very beneficial. Uh, because it reduces the need of heat. And in summer, it's the opposite. It's, uh, it makes uh, like an open terrace. So it makes a, a big shadow uh, on the glass windows and uh, uh, cool down the, um, the, the temperature. So again, the process of openings that we remind that people are behind the facade because they are still living there. So, but we place during the two days, uh, this, uh, temporary partition so they can uh, stay inside without uh, too much uh, troubles. Uh, the opening of the handrails and the day after start the process of uh, changing the glass window. 
uh, and then again the possibility for the inhabitants to uh, to use you can see also here the the winter garden uh, wall um, facade with uh, this solar curtain which is uh, which are absolutely necessary to create the comfort and the situation before and after and the winter garden which is really the place of appropriation and if you visit the place after the works you find again 500 uh, 530 different ways of uh, appropriation of this winter garden some very full up some of them more uh, more uh, discreet or more delicate but all the time uh, this there is this desire of uh, occupying the space the kitchen before they had just a, a little window and now a, a door that opens to the winter garden and again the transformation of uh, the building is uh, radical and now it's one it's a place which is really desired in uh, by everyone in the city to uh, to live there transformation uh, and all the old blocks. We created also some uh, additional uh, little houses on the roof, taking advantage of the flat roofs to make uh, some uh, uh, eight uh, bigger houses uh, with a very simple construction, but in a wonderful uh, situation. So these blocks are also social housing. They, it's a social housing company of the city of uh, Bordeaux. And just a few numbers to see the benefit of, uh, of those situations. 100% uh, of the existing has been conserved with only 20% of heavy renovation, like always elevators, bathrooms, uh, totally uh, renovated and the electricity system, plus 53% of surface added. Uh, it means in average uh, 50 square meters uh, per dwelling. Uh, including winter gardens, uh, balconies, and so on. Uh, the addition of uh, winter gardens, uh, the change of glass windows, some interventions of the ethic system allow to have uh, in, in a in natural way without any sophisticated system to uh, divide by three the primary energy consumption and uh, make this building a low energy building. Uh, the carbon footprint is half uh, than the, the, the demolition and rebuild, which has been envisaged before by the city. 100% of the uh, building had been, has been occupied during the construction works, no move of inhabitants, and uh, no increase of the rent plus charges, uh, which remains at the same uh, cost after the, the transformation. The cost of transformation is at uh, 52,000 uh, euros net, uh, cost of construction, while the estimation for demolition and rebuilt by the city was 160,000, and 80% has been funded by the social housing company uh, Akitanis itself, with only 20% of uh, public subsidies. It means that the company has taken on its uh, own funds, but also made a credit uh, to pay uh, these uh, this works. So. Uh, um, now we will uh, show how this, uh, uh, this work on transformation, starting from buildings, uh, has also impact on, uh, on the city. And then we can continue this work of uh, working from inside uh, to transform at the scale of the city. And Frederick will take uh, the floor. Okay, first, apologize for my exotic uh, English. I'm sorry, but uh, it's like that. So, um, if I resume uh, what uh, uh, says uh, Alan Jean Philippe, is um, near that spend less to do more. It's uh, just an attitude. So, never demolish for sure, because we could have the benefit of that. Uh, save the cost of uh, working because we can have uh, less uh, uh, economy, very uh, strong uh, opportunity to, to spend less, uh, save the energy, 
we speak about energy or gray energy, global energy between demolition and, trans and uh, rebuild or transformation near 74% uh, less. Saves the cost of uh, public facility because very often when we have to demolish a building, you have to make a new road, a new uh, country, a new park, a new car park, many things around that. So we study maybe 30 uh, days in, uh, in Paris and in France, which, which month we prove that uh, we spend near more 50% of the money for nothing. It's very interesting now. Uh, reduce uh, heating and uh, maintenance loads because we have less uh, uh, spend, you have to, to spend less money, sure. We have new housing and service because if we take, for example, the case of uh, Tourbeau Le Prêtre, we have had to start uh, near 100 and, uh, housing. And at the end, we could have on the same area 120 housing. That means that we don't need our, uh, urbanists for that. So uh, af after this uh, famous uh, conclusion, uh, Anne and Jean-Philippe spoke about uh, example of uh, building, architecture, uh, give you the, ghost, the goal of uh, what we think with a simple um, uh, attitude, um, which uh, I summed uh, up with, uh, in fact, uh, uh, sorry, uh, the constant research of a more uh, square, more light, more facilities, more pleasure to live. So we speak about that uh, in one dimension. The name is architecture. We need, for sure, every town in uh, every occidental uh, country. You need, I think, in uh, New York too, in Paris, in Bordeaux, in Shanghai. We need place for housing. Housing are the key of the city. Without housing, there is no city. So with uh, the intuition we have uh, in Tour Bois Le Prêtre, in Bordeaux, in, um, in Saint Nazaire, we say, okay, why is it could be in, in why it could be in, no, it could be interesting to have a research about not uh, the simple uh, simple building, but consider all the city, case by case, in the same. Uh, with the same attitude we have for an apartment or a building. So, because everybody search, every mayor has a, a, a double uh, discussion. They say in the same time, we want that uh, the, we conserve the mixity of the population in the city. We, are, we want to have uh, the possibility to give low rent to every uh, people uh, in the city, but in the same time, they don't work like that. They uh, make they make promotion of the, the the area and all the, the the price of the rent or the cost of the construction goes high. So, how to improve living condition? How to improve the quality of existing housing? How and where to build new housing? How to significantly reduce energy consumption? How to hollow financially? as many people as possible access housing, how to conserve and increase the diversity of urban situation, how to increase urban facilities, how to update the livability of the city, how to finance the updating, updating seating, how to finance the generous transformation of existing housing building and the creation of new housing. So we take the example of uh, Tombois Le Prêtre, I explained you before. The project we do is just transformation. We increase uh, each uh, situation. We give the best place for people. We give light, we give them. But in fact, if we uh, prolong, prolong is correct, where you can understand by yourself. Your, 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 your. 
maybe I can go. <laughs> now, if we prolong the system of that, there is just a simple area in Paris. And we, <clears throat> we, we find the possibility to increase more without uh, demolition, we, we, uh, we, uh, without cutting uh, trees, we are not modifying uh, modify, uh, the road, we can find on the same area, which is uh, connected, not 100 housing, but 120 housing. That means that if we take care of each situation in the city, case by case, and we study 1,648 existing situation, including near 435,000 existing dwelling, to find the possibility to build on this area without demolition, without modification, we're uh, conserving all the quality of the existing thing, but with addition of a new building, we find the possibility to build one, 135,000 dwellings more. That means that we don't move the question of the plan of the city. We don't move the organization of the street. We don't move nothing. We don't need urbanism for that. It's for this reason that the problem, I think, we think of the uh, profession now, there is two professions, there is architect and urbanist. Architect who work with the foot on the floor, urbanist who work from the moon, design something and say to the architect, okay, you can put 41 housing here, 42 here, 100 here, and yeah, so. If we mixed architecture and urbanism, for example, archibanism, urbanicture, you have the choice, it's your, your problem. And if you take care very uh, precisely, we speak a lot of uh, precision, with, it could be the same for the urbanism. If we take care with the precision of each case and say, okay, in this case, you can find one, uh, housing more, maybe 20 or 100, and uh, you can re uh, reorganize the city very uh, kindly, very with a lot of uh, generosity, and make in the same time housing, existing housing like project in Tourbois le Pret or Saint Nazaire or uh, Bordeaux, and at the same time increase the city. The city is just density and diversity. If you work and demolish, you lost the diversity and you lost the density. So we study very, maybe stupidly, maybe with a grand naivete, all this uh, situation, case by case. It's a, it's a long work. We work uh, since uh, six years. Uh, we for that. Nobody wants, uh, everybody finds that very fantastic, but they don't pay for that. But for, for us, it's interesting to, to change the mentality of the urbanism. And we, we do that very precisely. We, we make fish for each case. We try to, uh, to be more precise. We know exactly uh, where are the owner, how many uh, dwelling we have, how uh, are the construction, many, many, many things like that. It's very, uh, it's not 140, it's 160. Yeah. We consider for each study, we consider the rules, uh, admi administrative and urbanist urbanistic rules and subjective rules. Subjective rules is to consider that we have people on the site. Uh, maybe it's not, very often we have trees, we have organization and this kind of subjective uh, uh, topic are very important for us too. And after that, we make fish and we find the possibility to find one, two, ten, one hundred more. And uh, the addition of all these cases at the end proves that we can find 135,000 building more. No more. That means we can change uh, for 
the, this case is for Paris, but it, we, we make uh, a job near like that in Bordeaux too. And everywhere we can do like that. You can take the foot on the floor. You can say, okay, we have that. We can increase that. We, we have to consider that. We have to pay attention to this for these people and do that. No more. And we change. We, you have this one. No, no. And the urbanism could be like that. It's not necessary to demolish. We have, I, 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 have, I prefer the, I, I, I like a, a word is not transformation, is actualization. We have to actualize. You can find it, okay. The city, the world, the life for the pleasure of everybody. Every dwelling, every building can be transformed. Every dwelling, every building, every plot can be increased. A sustainable and quality densification for the benefit of living space, uses, and inhabitants. Thanks a lot. Peace. So um, we have uh, a few minutes um, to talk about the amazing work that, that you just shared with us. And, and we'll open up the, the, the questions to the floor um, before wrapping up for the evening. Uh, but I have to start off by saying that with each project that you showed, it was very hard for me not to start clapping for every single one, uh, especially the way in which you showed the before and after pictures and the, the incredible transformation that happened with each one of these buildings, each one of these communities, um, and for each one of these individuals. Um, it's it's quite, quite remarkable. Uh, one of the questions that comes up for me, and I think, Frederick, you, you finished up on this, this issue quite nicely, uh, is the question of scale. And you talk about the scale of the dwelling, the scale of the building, the scale of the community, and even the city. Um, does does the, the, idea, the, the idea of um, dwelling, the idea of housing change for you as the scale changes, or is it the same all the way through? I think it's the same. As mm -hmm. we say, it's what is important, it is to consider each flat, each family, each inhabitant, and then to consider it uh, 10 times if it is a small building, 100 times, but with the same precision for one that we complete for all of them. Mm. So the scale is not so important. It is, um, if we go inside, we lose the idea of scale. If we go in each flat, we lose the idea of scale because precisely we are in the scale, in the dimension of the family, of the inside of the space. And we see all the, the energy, the pleasure that this family has taken to improve uh, its uh, inside space. And if we see that, we cannot say this can be one house or it could be a building of 500 flats. This quality, you will find it in any case. So starting from this richness that very often nobody wants to see, mm. we can go further. And it is incredible to see uh, the pleasure of the inhabitants already when they, they live in the space, but also as soon as the space is improved, extended, immediately you have also new relationships between the neighbors that happen. So I think it's a very precise, delicate work to do very precisely. The dimension of the building for us doesn't really uh, happen. If we consider that um, 
the city or any big scale is an addition of fragments mm. of pieces of uh, life or working or this is the same people from the flat uh, to the street to the shop to the to the park to the museum so it's uh, it's 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 an endless continuity so it's why we like to say from inside out because it starts always from the scale of uh, uh, what we have around us one of the things that was very notable, especially uh, in Trois Beaux Le Pret, um, the original design by uh, the architect Lopez, um, the, the, there are loggia, there are ribbon windows, it's very horizontal. Uh, but then when the building was renovated, it, it felt like the building got closed. The windows were made smaller. The, the people who lived there were pulled back and it felt in your, your change or transformation. I, I don't feel like we can use renovation or reuse or adaptive uh, uh, or restoration. It really is a, a transformation. In your transformation, um, it, to, to, to my eye, it felt like part of that process was bringing the residents back forward. So they were, you were re-engaging them with the city so they could see the city again and, and the city could see them again. Is that notion of visibility um, part of that process for you, that transformation? Well, for example, the example of uh, Turbo Le Pret in 95, the first renovation, you, you speak clearly about that, that idea. Yeah, you mean that, uh, in fact, the inhabitants uh, lost a lot, yeah. in fact. And the reason why they lost, it's because uh, you have, in France, I think it's the same everywhere, lobby who speak about energy and say, okay, for the energy, we need to be enclosed, closed, we, are, we need a little windows. It was in, in 1995. It's or 80, between 80 and 90. But it is the same now. About the question of energy, it's the same. Yeah. In French, we say, okay, for the energy, we, we, need, we, we need a lot of uh, insulation. We need, uh, no, no, we don't, need, we don't speak about people. We don't speak about how to live. We don't speak about housing. We speak about energy. And for, for sure, if you say we need just energy and it's cold, you do that uh, like that, and, but, but, but it's not an answer to live. So it's a reason. And what is very fantastic with these two guys is we find uh, the, the answer of that, but I never live in uh, 20 uh, centimeters of, uh, of insulation, maybe some. Uh, like that, I don't know, but it's more interesting to live in uh, two or three uh, uh, meters uh, large of balcony and winter garden. And we give the same answer, but with different preconization of the lobby of uh, the construction and uh, that all. And it's evident we, uh, we need to, to, to go, to have to go outside to, uh, uh, to give more fluidity to live, just to live. It's, a, it's simple. Mm. It's, a, it's, it's a very simple idea, but uh, very efficient. It is, uh, it is this idea of villa. A villa, we know a villa, for example, we very often we take the example of the case to the houses in, as a social uh, a program for housing, mm. as a reference. And today it is interesting to consider this villa not only uh, outside the city in the countryside, but also inside the city on plenty of levels, but with the same quality. A villa, it means that you have the freedom to turn around your flat. And this is very important also to develop inside the city. So inside the city, you live at the eighth floor or 10th floor or 15th floor, you can go, you can take the corridor, go in your bedroom, go out of your bedroom, take in the, go in the winter garden, turn uh, all along the facade, come back through the kitchen or the living room, you can, keep turning on system in the winter garden. You can have some gardening, some little, you can have some seeds, you can. So it is this idea that to, 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 to live, to, to have a better relation with the climate. 
And precisely with all these systems, these kind of very simple tools like uh, the panel of a winter garden, a solar curtain, uh, the sliding windows uh, of the uh, that really make the the, the, the the separations inside outside that can slide with another curtain. All of this, the owner, the inhabitant, he can use these tools very very simply, yeah. just in function of its pleasure, its comfort. And by the way, he's producing its own energy savings himself. It is why we really believe that. Uh, housing the envelope. It is really like a clothes that you have on your shoulders. Right. It is yeah. never the same in the day, in the night, in the winter or in the summer. But it is the possibility of choice of the inhabitants. Some inhabitants, they want to totally open because the, the sun is fantastic. Some others, they prefer to filter. Some others, they prefer to be in the dark. So to give all these possibilities of the uh, inhabitants, and then they will choose what they want in function of their needs. It's about, about the, um, the openness and the visibility. Um, for us, it, uh, it's, it's, it's maximum openness with no, no, no principle of frame, but floor to ceiling, mm. because the view um, is free. And for us, it's also uh, related to uh, an important concept that we have uh, when we are designing project, it's about uh, escape. Um, escape means that um, as far as you see, uh, it's part of your space. So it's also a way to expand your, your space of living to expand. So and for us, it's something uh, uh, nearly obsessionally uh, strong. I was struck by how many of the photos of the interiors of the different departments, you could see the horizon from, from the living room, from the, not just from the balcony, but from the kitchen. And yeah. I think that really emphasizes that point, mm -hmm. how important being able to look beyond your space uh, was in your, in, in your designs. Um, one of the other things I find particularly inspiring about the way you talk about your work here in the United States, when we talk about sustainability, I joke it's like talking about vegetables. You have to eat your vegetables. You have to make your building sustainable. But yet when you talk about sustainability, you talk about playing with climate. You talk about the importance of connecting pleasure to sustainability. Can, can, you, can you talk a little bit more about that idea because I, I think that's such a good thing for for us to hear so that we can really approach sustainability in, in a playful way in a pleasurable way i think it's uh, you uh, in the introduction you were uh, talking about uh, quit uh, ego um, i think it's uh, there is one question that is absolutely necessary uh, we cannot only make a flat as the addition of two bedrooms, one kitchen, one bathroom, one living room. To create a place for inhabiting, you need to give a sort of place of undetermination, a place of places that the architect cannot say, this is a winter garden, no. It is perhaps it will become a place with a canapé and so far, or it could be become a sort of a tropical garden, or it become a place for the, the cat and the dog that are here. Um, but in fact, it is, this is absolutely important. And these qualities, they are so important that at the end, they make the fact of the sustainability. It is because you have this pleasure that the people will love their flat, love their spaces. And because of that, it will become sustainable. Yeah. And if you add the question of passive energy, solar energy, et cetera, the consumption, et cetera, then the building and the flat, it will last many times because it's a place of pleasure. And you will never, you will always take care of a place where you find pleasure. Yeah. And we, be, we, we really believe in that. It's why we like to go back to the places where we have made, made some project to see what the people have, have done. We are always surprised. It is never the same. 
it is never the same. Each time we see some incredible inventions by people. So this possibility of more space, more possibility of choice, it is a possibility also for these people for invention. Because they invent, we, Anne was talking about little collections of objects, etc. some others they start to make painting or sculpture. So it is, the space has to allow this possibility. It's very important. And I think it is for, for us the most important conditions for sustainability. Sustainability is um, the concept of sustainability is to, to spend less, less uh, material, less energy, uh, less, uh, less carbon, less, less everything. So, and uh, it's clear that it's, um, we don't believe in, uh, in um, making, uh, um, in doing that with technology, but much more in the way how we do things very simply. And also, um, we think also that the responsibility of uh, inhabitants of us is extremely important. So you can isolate uh, as much as you want. If you open windows, you lose the... So it means that everyone must understand how it works to, uh, to, to, to manage himself or herself also the, uh, the savings. And it's important for if, if you want to, uh, to um, that people being, uh, become responsible, they must, you must give something generous. You can uh, expect that people uh, think to sustainability or to save energy if we continue to reduce more and more uh, the size of the dwellings. Mm. And so it means that you must give something in exchange. So in the winter gardens, in the more space, the people understand very well how it works with the sun. When the sun uh, creates, uh, becomes warm, and then they close the curtains. And uh, in the in the night, in uh, in uh, in the winter, they close everything because they understand that the buffer zone is uh, is a kind of insulation. So, but all of this can be can happen if people are more relaxed with their conditions of living. If they are not compressed in their home. Uh, in the family, or if, if you give this generosity, you can become, you can expect more responsibility, and we need this responsibility to achieve a good sustainability. We need to believe in people first, <laughs> first, and we give just capacity, and they do the do that. What I think, I think that it's a. A fantastic statement, and I'd like to go back to um, one of the the comments that that you made uh, with regard to to ego um, and this concept that I put forward um, before before we had a, a chance to sit here uh, about humility and and there is a uh, a sense of humility as an architect as a designer in your work in that you're willing to embrace somebody else's building and work on that building um, and that your willingness to, 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 to allow users to program the space um, to decide how they want to use the space, um, which is, I, I would argue, very uncharacteristic of your typical architect who wants to make their own building, who wants to decide exactly what happens in every square inch. Can you talk a little bit more about that, that what I would read as humility in, in the way you approach design? I think uh, fundamentally architecture is to place for living. So that's why we, I was talking at the introduction about the void. Mm. We are not building matter, we are, we are working and trying to organize some voids in which life takes place. And I think this point is extremely important. So it means that the architecture only exists because of the life. So it's the life that, that when it comes, uh, that creates the architecture. So we give some capacities, as Frederick was saying, but then the life of the inhabitant comes and then the architecture appears. Because uh, architecture is not a sculpture. 
this architecture, there's some, some thing in which we are inside, we live inside, we use it, we, we invite people. So it's a life that makes the architecture, it could be a housing, or it could be a school, or it could be an university, it is always the same, or it could be an art center. Uh, it is because of the life, because of the use, that architecture suddenly happens. The use can change, the, 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 the inhabitants can change, the life will be different, perhaps some new functions will happen, but each time there is this reaction of the, uh, the, the fact of inhabiting. And this reveals architecture for me. Um, Ilkas and Andrea, um, Ruby wrote a, a, a fantastic essay about some of your work, and, and in it they, they pointed out that um, you seem to embrace modernism from, from, a, from a formal standpoint, but simultaneously you contradict a lot of assumptions that modernism had, at least in its early iterations in the 1950s. Uh, you, um, I would argue, or they would argue, that you reject the tabula rasa, you, you reject the existence minimal. Um, can you talk about that, that relationship between your work and how it fits in with the, the larger modernist, I guess, oeuvre? Uh, I think it's, a, it's we, we have to consider all this history of architecture at the moment where it was produced at the time it was produced, and we have to consider it now for the moment of the society today. So, the, the, so and then we have to be extremely precise. Mm. Uh, in the modernism, I like, for example, the piloti that saves the ground and we can, the nature can go under. I like the transparency, I like the plan libre, I like the toit terrasse, the roof terrace on which we can go. Is all these elements are for me they are very interesting and they are very different with the more uh, ancient architecture so there are very interesting points of the modernism that I, we really like to develop in our projects but when the modernism uh, comes and make a sort of tabula rasa uh, makes away takes away the all the parts of the city mm. i don't understand that and i prefer to be related with uh, even some project of Fiona Friedman or Archie Graham that were working on the superposition of the city to the, to, the, to the existing city. So we have to be very, very careful with all these points. It is not, we cannot reject uh, definitively something. We have to perhaps to take precisely some points and to reject some others and to establish what today, because also the conditions have totally changed, makes sense. In general, for, for us, it's uh, we don't like to 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 think to a system should be replaced by another one. Mm. So we like, in a way, to to have no selection in the history and to take everything, but just take what we think is the best and and make with, with all of that. It's uh, the principle of uh, making do. It's uh, it doesn't mean that uh, we accept everything. But uh, we accept the history as a whole. And the modernism is our history. It's, uh, it's our contemporary uh, time. So for us, it's, uh, we don't see why it should be killed uh, to replace it by, by what? By something else? Is yeah. it better? Is it worse? So while finally it's, uh, it's so, um, so uh, motivating, so inspiring to, to take things and to analyze, to, to criticize, to analyze and to take what is good and to continue with that and to make it own uh, for, for today. I'd like to go back to your concept of combining the foot on the ground and the, the head and the moon. Um, <laughs> the, the, the herbitecture or the organism is, I'm not sure if I'm doing those justice. Um, but what, is, do, what do you see as the relationship between uh, some of your buildings and, and the city around them? Uh, and I, I think it's absolutely fascinating that you, you took this concept of the dwelling to the building to the city. Um, but there also, uh, as, 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 as many of your images showed, 
uh, a, a relationship between the building and the city that's right around it. I think one of the more profound images was the way in which the neighborhood in Bordeaux seems to have been transformed just through those three buildings. Can you talk a little bit about that, that relationship between your architecture and the, the city around it? Since there is, I think, I don't remember exactly what say uh, Jean-Philippe is perfect. He speak about the city. I, maybe it could be, I don't remember. He can repeat that. Um, the city is a, a dwelling and a dwelling is a city or something a like city. a small city, something like that. There is no limit. When Anne speak, about the question of the view mm. when you are on the balcony, your apartment, the dimension of your apartment is not the number of square meters you have inside, it's all the perspective you have in front of you. So you can see that from inside your apartment. And if you are in the city, you can see in the opposite. Uh, you can see, for example, the, the difference uh, between when you are in city in Bordeaux, the difference of point of view of the old building and new building is totally different. That means that architecture capacity you give for each people, case by case for apartment, for an apartment, it's an answer also for the people who live in the city. It's a benefit for the two. It's for it benefits for everybody. So there is no limit between architecture and uh, and cities for this reason, because <clears throat> you have you you have your apartment, you have staircase, you go in the hall, you see you go outside. Where is the limit? There is no limit. That means the city is inside the, the apartment, and the apartment is inside the city too. So it's for this reason we don't need our urbanist. Mm. No, but I think it's a, there is a big change. Not, not. There is a big change, which is the fact that it is clear that we have to work today with the existing city. If we talk about sustainability, if we talk about ecology, it means that we have to consider what is already existing yeah. and stop consuming. Uh, it is important to see that even if we have a building that it is not good, if you add something to this building that is not good, it becomes better than a new building. Because precisely you just, there is one part, something was missing and you add just what was missing, but the rest was good. So instead of, uh, it's like uh, in, in France, this policy of demolition, it means that you have one, I take one building or uh, 100,000 buildings, one, you demolish, you take one down and then you rebuild one. And at the end, you have one. If you have one and you, uh, you add 50% of one, at the end, you have 150%. So it means less consumption, less money. And at the end, you have more than what is done by the standard. So it is this, at this point that the efficiency of the transformation, it is to eventually keep something that is not perfect, but by adding something new, to these things, you produce something new that becomes much more interesting than all the standards are doing, actually. Mm. It's why in Bordeaux, we have, for social housing, we have built the most beautiful flats that we have in Bordeaux in this situation. And by the efficient, with the transformation of the existing. And this is very important today. It's so you have the multitude of places where this process of transformation is possible. And it is only possible if we think about starting from each precise point. The precision is the key point. Yeah, what, what we criticize is um, today, and we don't know the situation there, but in Europe, it's something like that. It, is there with the, this too big separation between urban planning and architecture. And most often we, as architects, we have the feeling that the architecture is there to shape the city, to, to, according to rules of heights or, um, and for us, it's, uh, it's, we would like to see things in the other way around. So it means that we think that, um, and we expect in, uh, in starting from the inside that uh, the inside and the way we, we start improving from the smallest will influence, we continue 
around, around and around and much larger. The problem is that most often, and uh, we, for all the projects that we show, the three projects of transformation, if, you, if we show you the original projects, you will see that we don't stop at the building. We propose always that, for example, the, the, the basis, the plinth, uh, to, clean, to create plinths that uh, re um, um, densify the ground uh, and make a better connection uh, at the scale of the ground, of the two, three levels. Uh, so, and all of this project, we did that. Mm. But at the end, after the competition, we are asked not to do that. We are asked to stop in the footprint of our building because this task of, uh, of, uh, of uh, expanding buildings is given to the urban planners. So for us, it's something which is uh, uh, today that should be changed for, uh, to, to, to create those better relations and especially because we are working on uh, existing cities and not from the, for the tabula rasa. Yeah, and it's not just also a question of architecture, it's a question of um, social uh, point of view because uh, we don't make architecture for architecture. We make architecture for people who are inside. That uh, all the demolition uh, is not only demolition of uh, a building; it's also the demolition of uh, life of people. Mm. So where where go these uh, people? Where they go? In the moon. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. The uh, Auslandish. Ausland, yeah, Auslandish. Yes, it's. Uh, I think it's. Um, it's simply about uh, kindness. Um, in the architecture and urban planning, they have to question themselves about this idea of kindness today. How do we uh, consider the city? Consider the inhabitants? Uh, and all starts from this, so we can be architect, we can be urban, urban planner. I think the point is that each time we have to be, to have this necessary kindness at the starting point. So we think that uh, when we are too far away from the situations, when we are not in the precise details that are precisely the questions that considering each inhabitant or each situation, when we are a bit too far, we cannot grab this kindness we cannot find it immediately. So uh, it's why the precision, the observation, listening, taking time uh, is so important. In looking at um, a lot of your work and being introduced to your work uh, over 10 years ago, I kept asking myself the question, is, is, it, is it about education? Is it about dissent? Is it about activism? Um, and the answer I kept coming back to you was what you just said was, no, it's, it's, it's about kindness. And that's, that's the shift. That's, the, that's what requires us to change the way that we're thinking about so many of these problems is because you're coming up with new solutions that start with kindness. It's kindness also because we see today that the citizens they are more and more involved in their city. They are more and more questioning the city why this is imposed, why we, I cannot uh, uh, be questioned about uh, what could be possible or not. This, this question of the, the, the actually, we have to, to, to consider that all the citizens, they are really, really uh, interested by what happens in their neighborhood and, all, it, it, and, and they are right to, to think yeah. that. So, how oh, we can uh, work with them, help them. And it is, uh, uh, Frédéric was explaining that, uh, I don't know, probably in New York, it is like in Paris. So it means that we are in our office of uh, architects. We are uh, opening some, uh, some reviews in which we, we are looking for competitions. But in the, all these competitions, there are already the uh, urban plan has been done, the programmation has been done, the plot has been defined and there are some rules. And as architect, we have to place our cake in the middle of the, of the plot. 
uh, and the building <laughs> must be in wood. <laughs> and so nobody asked us to invent anything. Yeah. Just perhaps a form, but uh, no, so when I, I work with my students in my, in my school as professor, uh, the, the results of the students by themselves, because they are concerned by the society, by the needs of the inhabitants, immediately when they are free, they do much more than the simple task that is given most of the time to architects. So I think it's a big waste of the talent of the architects, actually. They, they probably at school, I think they learn about listening, observing, taking time, being close to the situations, and all this uh, energy and uh, uh, is, is, is a waste in the professional life, unfortunately. Mm. So we have to change that. Yes, we do. <laughs> Um, so we're, we're going to open the floor to uh, some questions. I believe we have a microphone here. Um, if folks uh, have a question and they would like to step up to the microphone. Namaste. Uh, it's uh, 20 years of the Sam Ratinsky lecture and uh, uh, talking about housing without people. Uh, I probably may have uh, attended 30 years of uh, Architecture League. Again, housing without people. 60 years of United Nations Habitat and housing without people. Uh, I'm uh, happy we are here at uh, Cooper Union, Union meaning uh, architecture, art, engineering together. Uh, uh, COVID-19 has revealed something amazing, which is housing without people. Uh, and this is at the core of, you know, if we are saying build back better, um, vacancy, you know, whether that's retail, whether that's storefront, whether that offices, workplaces, and housing. So before COVID, it was twice the buildings, housing without people, twice. Now, after COVID, if you look at buildings, the mix of buildings, whether those are housing or offices, workplaces, three and a half times. So uh, my question to the panel and the person who's at the center whom we don't know who is and we would like to hear from him because the question is at the core of the building and the core of the architecture, which is the toilets and the tenure. You know, when we are looking at building, I think to fix buildings, to make them work, to, you know, and, you know, people within, I think, you know, the technology, the engineering, the toilets and the tenure is at the core. So the person at the center, I would like to <laughs> address that. Thank you so much. And, and, and thanks, uh, the AIA Housing Would Committee, you know, I am so glad. Thank you so much. Well, I, I appreciate to be given a voice. I'm here really just to help make sure that the questions are understood. Um, and uh, I think that that's a wonderful, wonderful way to begin the response to your question, which is about the people who don't have housing and perhaps people who also don't have a voice and how these wonderful architects that I happen to be associated with are able to engage with that condition. So I think that I will, now that I've given them the idea or the ED, uh, we'll let you continue, please. Yeah, but, uh, but thank so you for the opportunity. I, 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 I've not understood very well the question. What, no. what, what does he want to say? 
Well, he's, he's talking in general about the question of, I believe the question, and perhaps you can make sure I've understood you correctly about the large number of housing units that are vacant that are not currently being used and that that's actually increased as a result of the pandemic and how we respond to that is I think of crucial importance, especially as you're also building extra housing when we have already excess housing that's empty, but often empty for the wrong reasons. Mm. It's clear that I think it's everywhere in the world, there is a crisis on the question of housing. Mm. Uh, we have made some workshops recently in uh, Australia and Sydney. This is always the same question, always the same municipality asking for affordable housing, but in the same times, never making what is necessary for that. Uh, so it is just words and uh, not real action, in fact, uh, in order to consider uh, affordability and possibility to make good housing and affordable price. The question it is that the, the crisis of uh, housing in Paris, you have, we have not enough flats and the, the quality of this space is very bad, but it's fine because the market goes higher. Um, so it's a, the, 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 the speculative system is, is quite happy with this, with this situation of crisis. Yes. Uh, and you have not so many uh, other fields uh, in which uh, the, the, it happens like that. Precisely, if you look at the increase of the rents or increase of the, the cost by square meter of the flats during these last 20 years, it has considerably increased. And the amount of the budget for housing in the budget of a family has totally increased. So it means that you have, uh, actually this, this problem is, is extremely uh, complex. And we have really, as architects, tried to think how we can participate, try to change these questions. I think that's the key. Sorry. You know, it's, a, it's a problem of speculation in the big cities because yeah. for the owners, Finally, they, they, they earn enough just because they belong the buildings, because the cost is always increasing and they earn a lot of money without the problems of uh, renting. So it's a really a strong political problem, but as architects, we, of course, we, we just observe it, but we have, the, of course, not, no impact on it. And uh, for sure, it's a, it's a big problem because the cities uh, are more and more empty why there is a so big problem of uh, housing but it's a problem of speculation and uh, housing should really uh, be removed of any system of financialization that would be the only yeah. solution that's the reason my question was actually at for the core of the building for the core of architecture and not about the political or not about this uh, what's happening between cop 15 and glasgow uh, that uh, you know, housing without people or buildings without people situation. My question is, you know, uh, about toilets and tenure, because just like facade, the engineering of the facade and the opening of the buildings, same way the core of the building, you mentioned about elevators, but also the toilets and plumbing, that is something, you know, people, community, you know, uh, a house, uh, you know, interacts very closely and very expensive, very technically challenging. So how do you deal with the core? You know, that's, that's uh, uh. So I think in, in, in the interest of time, I think it would be good to, to allow a few other questions come, come forward. I think it's, uh, it's, it's the work of an architect to work efficiently on those questions of uh, plumbing or without, without taking the, the best part of uh, the dwelling, a facade uh, mm. is there to bring a light or to bring ac access to outside. So it's, um, yes, it's a skill of an architect to work uh, efficiently and uh, in a very good way on, on, on such uh, issues. Uh, thank you for the uh, wonderful presentation. Uh, I think in building densities for residences as, um, as sort of this mass housing scheme, you've done an excellent job of providing um, sufficient light, sufficient air, uh, and basically everything that is common sense, but expanded in such a way that uh, the luxury is no longer a luxury. And my question is between the scale of units or dwellings, 
and the scale of a building. There are also opportunities of sharing spaces, uh, community spaces that happens outside of the generosity of the units, but inside the building envelope or slightly outside of it within the territory. Uh, you didn't emphasize that in your work, but I, I know there are some, uh, so I don't want to, I want you to maybe speak about that because um, I come from China, a country that is massively in a, uh, it's not necessarily in the housing crisis that the housing markets are sort of bouncing around, but the main question is how we live together, you know. But we, we, we believe really that uh, a good situation for individual life is the best condition for the collective life. Yes, we, uh, in, in, in giving more space for each individual, uh, each, how, each uh, dwelling, we think that it's the first step for the community because uh, the community can start at a very small scale, the scale of your neighbors, so if, you, if more, most of people who have many, many tiny apartments, they never invite anyone because it's quite impossible. So if you have more space, you can already invite people, invite uh, the, the, the friends of your children, invite your neighbors, invite. And this is the beginning of the community life. And afterwards, it's clear that you can create additional communal space in the housing in the Tour Bois Le Pret or in, in uh, the transformation we did, we uh, reopened many uh, spaces for the community, uh, the community, which has been closed over the time. Um, but we see that it's very difficult because uh, it's, not, it's not only the fact to create them. How do they live afterwards? Who, is, uh, uh, who pay for it? Uh, who is in charge of uh, maintenance? Uh, who organize uh, the life inside? So. Um, it's, it's always um, a good idea to, to, to do it, but you can observe if you, uh, in, not in all countries, for, for example, if you go to Switzerland, it works very well because they have this culture of it. But in, the, in the most of countries, you can see that afterwards, it doesn't work very well. So for us, it's, a, it's, it's a, we, 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 we think that uh, the communal space cannot be a, a kind of compensation of a too small individual space. And that if we cannot do the both, we prefer start by giving more to each because uh, it uh, allows everyone uh, to have this community, uh, commu uh, this um, collective uh, relation. So uh, it's, uh, it's a very interesting question, but uh, there is no one solution. I think we have time for one more question. Um, I, I, we're just going to have to have you back. I'm sorry. You just have cl clearly there's tomorrow. much more to talk about. Yes. <laughs> we can come back tomorrow. Yeah. Sorry. Time is running out. But um, we had you know a very large internet audience, and I just wanted to get a, a, at least one question from our internet audience. Um, and you know the projects you present are so successful. And the transformations seem uh, so robust that uh, this individual asked the question, have other architects in France adopted your method of transformation of social housing? We cannot say that there are so many. We know that um, many would like to do it, uh, but they, uh, either they don't find uh, the... The, the good situation, or they don't struggle enough to uh, uh, to uh, to achieve it, because uh, of course when we present it, it seems to be easy to be, uh, but it's uh, it's a long process of uh, discussing, of uh, keeping our conviction, or making no compromise, and uh, uh, so. But um, I think we think that any any architect could do it. With a, with a will of doing it. Of course, you need to find uh, the, the, the client, which also, who, uh, also agrees to, to do this, the same. Uh, it's also very difficult because uh, 
in, uh, for example, in France, there's a lot of uh, social housing uh, companies. Many of them, they, they, they don't agree so much for demolition and they would like to go towards uh, transformation. But at the last moment, they don't take the decision because to take this decision, it, uh, it means that you, uh, you yeah, it's, it, it asks a, a kind of uh, courage for the, for the, not really for us, but for the, the owners to go towards that. But what we see in uh, probably that today, the situation has uh, in a way changed with uh, the um, ecological urgencies, uh, with uh, also the COVID, which has shown how the housing is uh, extremely important in the, for the, in the life. Uh, and probably it will uh, it will change some uh, some um, minds and uh, and uh, we see also that in uh, in the schools where we are teaching then the the young students they, they have really this uh, uh, this uh, this approach and uh, probably in the, in the next year it will uh, it will change. Oh. Occupy Wall Street. So, okay, so Brian. Brian, sorry. And yeah. I'm sorry, can we have one final question? I cut in front of okay. this fine fellow and I promised him that he could go. Yeah. So one more question for the evening before okay. we wrap okay. it up. Sorry. It's expensive now. <laughs> it's, it's night rate. Please. It's night Please. rate. Okay. I, I'm sorry, there's a lot of pressure here being the last, last question. Um, anyhow, um, I wanted to know, uh, you pointed out um, uh, some of the the windows um, in the older units, and uh, you said that they were plastic. And I, I was looking at these uh, new windows, mo mostly these buildings full of windows, and I'm wondering how much how well they're going to uh, take wear and tear. Are are they durable? Uh, are, are these buildings durable? Uh, I'm sure Pruitt Igo looked very good when it was first completed. Uh, how well uh, will they take uh, wear and tear and vandalism and and maintenance issues, things like that? Okay, thank yeah, you. Yeah, thank you. Yes. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so, if if I if I may, I'd like to introduce the executive director of the Architectural League. As I mentioned, this is uh, tonight's event has been a collaboration of of both the Cooper Union, uh, the Center for Architecture, and the Architectural League. So, Rosalie, thank you. Thank you. And Jean-Philippe and Frederick and Anne, thank you so much for a really fantastic lecture. And thank you and Brian for a really stimulating conversation afterwards. Um, in the interest of precision and specificity, which has been a kind of theme through tonight, I, I wanna say a couple of additional thank yous um, to Brian and to Peter Bafita, who, um, was taking the questions from the internet, um, who are the chairs of the AIA Housing Committee, and to Ben Prosky and Joseph Corbin from the AIA, um, to Nadir Tarani, Nora Kawi, and Mauricio Aguera from Cooper Union, and to Anne Rieselbach and Rafi Lehman from the Architectural League. This has really been a terrific three-way collaboration. The work that Frederick and Anne and Jean-Philippe have done together is an inspiration and a provocation. Brian used the word humility in one of his questions. And for me, the signal quality of their work is their boldness as analysts and, and as designers, clear-eyed, careful, precise observers and creators with no sacred cows. And the combination of that fearlessness with deep humility and respect 
first of all, for the people who inhabit the buildings they create, along with respect for the material, environmental, social, and economic investments um, that our existing built world represents, and that must weigh heavily in the calculus of our present actions. They are fiduciaries in the very best sense of that word, um, of the interest of all of us and of the finite resources of the world that we share and depend on. The frugal toughness of their attitude towards the material world is paired with an expansive generosity of their imaginations and the respectful embrace of the capacity of all kinds of people to invent and arrange for themselves the specific conditions of their daily lives. Thank you for showing us the power of these pairings of boldness and humility, of frugality and generosity, and of the radical possibilities for architecture that they create. Thank you so much.